Praise the Lord, saints. How are you? My name is Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case. Well, it's Monday. It's two minutes after 12 noon. It's February 11th. Hope you had a great weekend. I did. We had a Selah moment with Pastor Miller from Sarasota, Florida. Oh my goodness. I don't know what um, you did this weekend, but I had a Selah moment down at the house of worship. You see, I had been running out of steam Everything needs revival. Everything. Even the earth. That's what had happened to me. I went about my daily chores, but inside it was a half-hearted effort. Half-hearted. Because there seemed to be a, a connection loss somewhere, and I couldn't pinpoint it. Didn't know how what I would do to reconnect with my Creator. Oh, I was thankful. I woke up in the morning and I prayed. And I talked to Him and interceded for others. But deep down inside, the joy of the Lord was depleting. depleted. I hadn't the Father God, I don't need to lose my joy. That's all that I have. Influential. I'm not a political activist or prominent in the um, in the affairs of uh, government or even, you know, not an actress. But I knew personally that my joy had been depleted. The pastor had uh, mentioned in his sermon something I began to do while in service. I had done it before, but it had just now I do. I forget. We must think. We must thank. And we must shout. Before I go into Psalms 150, 150 Psalms, that will explain it all. Let's come on. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this good afternoon. This wonderful Monday. Father God, we have come from the mountaintop and we are, Lord Jesus, in the valley where we 
just resonating and as our pastor would say, regurgitating the word of God. We love you. We need you every single day, every hour of the day. Please forgive us for all unrighteousness. Lord, we thank you for what you have done and what you're doing now and what you're going to do. Use us. Use us, Lord, to remind us to remind my other how great thou art. We thank you for victory and power to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, saints, 150 Psalms was written by David after he had uh, completed the, um, the singing and the going up, worshiping, David told everything in the song. See, he, he told about the heart's condition. He told about his problems. He shared with us about his enemies his longings, his fears. And he always came back to rejoicing. There's wisdom to be, uh, to be grasped through David's writings of the Psalms. I was looking at this, um, this uh, documentary on TV about the stress that our bodies go through. And indeed, these are stressful times. They're finally realizing, and I don't know if they're giving God the glory, but if you look at it on Netflix, people are realizing that um, our bodies our bodies to do more than just live until we die. We don't use all of the um, all of the little facets. The body heals itself, you know, just like uh, you know, in a normal body, you get cut. Uh, you 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 might catch a cold. It has a lot to do with how we think, what we perceive, what we meditate on, what we believe. I'm going to read Psalms 150 into your hearing. And if you have it, read with me. If you don't, just listen. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It says in the first verse, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him. Praise him with the strings and the pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. I also looked up some um, information on the computer. Some commentary 
about uh, the 150th Psalms. And, and um, Charles Spurgeon, he was a very great a minister, very important, very prestigious, very well-known commentator on the Bible, Charles H. Spurgeon, a minister. He asked the question, who should praise the Lord? In the first verse, it says, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's an exhortation that all things on the earth and in heaven, Jehovah and the one God, the one God, should be the one object of adoration. When you go to church, if you go to church, I dare you, go with the persistent attitude of praising God. David said that's what we should do. It's wonderful to fellowship and to see others there. But our main reason for going is to praise God. Oh, yes, you say, oh, I praise him in the car. I praise him in my bedroom. I praise him in the closet. But there is nothing like going to the house of worship, a place that is set apart as you are setting yourself apart, a holy place, a sanctuary, and uh, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty heavens. Praise him in the sanctuary. It is supposed that we can praise God And um, it is not necessary for us to shout or dance or show any kind of uh, emotion. And um, however, that's not written in the Word of God. It says, praise Him for His acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. It says praise him with the timbrel and the dancing. Hmm. Now, a timbrel is a, a, not a living uh, uh, substance. It's not a, um, it's an uh, item of music isn't it? But the Lord says, let ha everything that hath breath, that same breath that God gave us, we are to let out of our bodies with a, uh, a resounding praise. Spurgeon says, the hands and the feet were both employed And make all men, this is what Charles H. Spurgeon says, make all men to know, aimed to worship. <laughs> is our quietness, our, <coughs> our uh, continual, how would you say, resistance? to an amen or a thank you Jesus or the lifting of our hands is that something that would allow men to know that we are not ashamed of, of worship it just might be are we ashamed to let others know how good God is Are we actually in service 
expecting the Lord to stop by and to inhabit the praises of his people? Are we thinking about his goodness? Are we thanking goodness? Well, if we are, then that would mean that our our hands and our feet are employed. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Everything. In the third verse, it says, Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. The loudest and the clearest note call people together. Make all men know that we are not ashamed to worship. That sound of that trumpet, that clear sound, back in the day of, of uh, David's uh, reign, he sounded a trumpet. He called together the assembly and they worshiped the Most High God. He knew what they were going through and he knew how they were bringing, they were uh, uh, going through and to whom to give thanks and glory to because of their victories. David was a and he gave glory to God through worship. He was not ashamed to use the trumpet, the timbrel, the dance. There was one time he had uh, danced so heartily before the Lord that uh, his wife was ashamed of him. And uh, David did not. David danced even harder. And because of this, he was after God's own heart. David. In the fourth verse, it says, praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Okay, so we use our hands, we employ our feet, and the entire body with all its members. That means your pancreas, your heart, your lungs, your veins, your intestines, your muscles, your capillaries, the veins and arteries, your brain, your ears, everything that hath breath. This breath belongs to God. So we give it back to him in a hallelujah, breathly sounds. Verse 5 says, Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with sounding cymbals. So, praise has beaten the timbrel, swept the harp, sounded the tr uh, trumpet, and now for the last most heavy of slumberers, says Charles Spurgeon, and startling the most indifferent of onlookers, she dashed the discs of brass, of brass, and with sounds both loud and high to the Lord. Saints of the Most High God, reclaim your victory, your power, your joy, your peace. Praise Him. Open your hands. Raise your hands. Dance. Yesterday I, I thought about it because it has been frowned upon uh, to pray in schools and uh, frowned upon to praise in church. We have removed 
corporate prayer. We have removed the playing of this tambourine. In some churches, it still remains. Uh, churches that have removed organs and, and uh, horns, you're only allowed to clap. There are some churches. Hmm. Could it be that the enemy, that the joy of the Lord is your strength? Could it be? Could it be that that exaltation, that worship, that thought? about his greatness and how he brought you through and took you out and keeps delivering and keeps sending blessings. Could it be that the enemy wants to stop this? You better believe he does. You better believe it. Final verse, verse 6 says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. He gave us breath, Charles Spurgeon says. Let them breathe his praise. Be least or greatest. Withhold not your praises. What a day will it be when all the things in all places unite to glorify the one only living and true God. Be the final triumph of the church of God. One day we will stop and think about and start thanking him and rejoice and shout as we say la what God is doing and what he has done. Praise ye the Lord. I'm Mother Gail Trailer, and I'm finding life much easier. Why? Because I've learned something. I'm going to put Gail out of the way. She might praise God one day and lose her wig. Her teeth might come out in the process. But this breath that he gave me, is going to praise God. No one knows like I know and what he's doing for mine. See, because when you praise him, you not only strengthen yourself while you're praising, you're thinking and thanking thinking and thanking, not praising him dumb. It's no dumb worship. The more you think on his goodness, the more the Holy Spirit will add to that thought. Remember this, remember that, remember this, remember that, and you praise him even more as those thoughts quicken in you. And that same Holy Spirit that is igniting those prayers and those praise strengthens your body for the day, for the week. Sometimes, even for the week. But we don't wait that long before we get back to the house of prayer and the saints of God. That's why it's so effective to, to come together. The Lord knew what he was talking about when he said, come together. Approaching, come together, get together to worship. Not worship people, not worship uh, things, but to worship 
the living, the true and living God who brought us out, took the shackles off of our feet and keeps us walking and talking, living and and we are we are lively stones dead god is good and his mercies are everlasting and his truth endures to all generations so praise him there's something wonderful that happens to you when you praise him you go into another realm, a whole nother way, a whole, you see things better. The glass is not half empty anymore. It's half full. And your cup will run over. My name is Gail Trail, and I'm just passing through. Have a blessed day.